And I want to greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, Back to Basics Ministries, Incorporated in Lithonia, Georgia, on this beautiful Mother's Day 2020. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. I am so glad to see so many of you online with us live this morning. And I believe God is going to bless you. God is going to bless you mightily. I pray that you are weathering the storms. Uh, the, when the storms of life are raging, God will stand by God. us. And there is nothing too difficult for God. Nothing too difficult for God. And so we give God the praise. We thank God for who he is. We give him all the glory and honor. Praise God. And I see so many of my friends and family members on. Praise God. Uh, my son, Wes, is on with us live. And his precious wife, Marisol. Oh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Uh, let me try this. Feliz Dia Madre. Uh, that's kind of close. <laughs> Wes, is that close? Is that close? Feliz Dia Madre. Anyway, happy Mother's Day to my daughter-in-law. Happy Mother's Day to Florence Gaffney. Happy Mother's Day to Dr. Jean Bratton. Happy Mother's Day to Tara Trugler. Happy Mother's Day to uh, Jackie Carter, my precious wife. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we're blessed today because our son, uh, uh, Jared, said he's going to come over and have church with his mama today. And so that's the Mother's Day treat. Uh, he, Jared came over and he's having church with his mama. Praise God. What a Mother's Day gift to have church with your mother. There are many of us wish we could have church with our mother. Wes says, uh, Feliz Dia de las Madres. That's a uh, happy Mother's Day. Feliz Day of the Mothers. Okay. Okay, Feliz Dia de las Madres. Praise God. Gracias a mi hijo. Uh, praise God. And we just thank God for it. Dustina, happy Mother's Day to Dustina. And uh, all the people down in Tennessee, happy Mother's Day to the Ponds up in Pennsylvania. Happy Mother's Day to all of you who are listening by recording. recording. I just praise God. I thank God. And, uh, and happy Mother's Day to the household of my newly found cousin, David King, up in uh, Ardmore, Pennsylvania. We found out a couple weeks ago that David and I are cousins, uh, or close to cousins anyhow. Darlene Bonnie, happy Mother's Day. Praise God. And to so many, to many others, to all our friends listening by recording, to all of our friends in Kenya, happy Mother's Day to... Um, to the Martinsons in Sweden, happy Mother's Day to all of our friends in Jamaica, happy Mother's Day to our friends in France and Germany and Canada and other nations. We celebrate Mother's Day here in America and to all the mothers, wherever you are, we praise God for you. Praise God. I am so thankful that I had a wonderful mother who passed five years ago. What a wonderful woman. She trained me, she and my dad. And they gave the best they could to help us to get a start in life and to help sustain us in life. And so I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God. So we're come to, we've come today to give God the praise and the glory and the honor Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so I ask you uh, to make sure that you get your grape juice ready. I'm going to hold ours up. Jackie and I, we have ours ready. Uh, two glasses of grape juice and some crackers. And we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Now, if you don't have your grape juice ready right now, and I just spilled mine, Jackie, so I'll have to share yours. Well, if you don't have your grape juice ready by now, we'll give you some time at the end of the service during a question and answer period. We're going to have a question and answer period about what communion is all about. And then during that Q&A period, maybe five to ten minutes, as we're answering questions from the audience, then that will give you a chance to go to the kitchen 
pour you a little bit of grape juice. I might have to pour a little bit more in mine. Uh, my crackers are already soaking in grape juice, so they'll go down easily because I spilled one. But praise God. Okay, so mute your phones, everybody. Let's get ready for service. Let's have a wonderful time in the Lord today. Let's have a wonderful time in the Lord. Once again, I welcome you to the Back to Basics online church. We welcome Karen and all of our friends up in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. Praise God. Praise God. And so we bless God. We're going to ask uh, Dr. Jean Bratton if she would lead us in prayer. Pray with her as we get into the right attitude and, and humble ourselves before God Almighty. Dr. Jean Bratton, would you come and lead us in prayer today? Certainly. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Father God, we humble ourselves before your mighty hand this morning. And Father God, as we go forth pressing and with a hunger and thirst for your word, we just ask, Father God, that you bless Esther Carter and his household today. Father, we thank you that you have chosen him to give us the message this morning. And as the saints are edified, Father, you will be glorified. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Dr. Bratton. And we give God the praise for you. Um, Dr. Bratton is a wonderful woman of God. She just buried her older sister yesterday, um, Julie Law. And Julie was such a wonderful woman and a supporter of uh, Dr. Bratton's ministry up in Wilmington, Delaware. And so we know your heart is heavy, but God is the healer. He is the healer. There is no situation that God cannot heal. So we thank God for you and, 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 and pray that you continue on. And we pray for your family and for all of the Mays family and the Bratton family. Bless you, we pray uh, in Jesus' name. Well, praise God. We're going to get ready today. I want to uh, give you, we're going to give you a message. The message today is going to be entitled, The Meaning of the Lord's Supper. There are so many approaches to celebrating the communion or the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper. But we want to give you what God has given us and uh, hope it will be a blessing to you. Praise God. And so I think uh, our lesson today would make a lot of things clear for a lot of people. Then we want to have just a little question and answer period because we know many of you are coming from different backgrounds. So let's take a few minutes and and answer some of your questions about what Holy Communion is all about, what taking communion is all, all about, what, what the Lord's Supper is all about, and then we'll answer your questions. And during that time, those of you who don't have your communion ready, you can go and get your little glass of, uh, uh, I, I, I prefer grape juice rather than vino, you know, no sangria, a uh, little bit of grape juice, grape juice, unfermented, and a piece of cracker. Praise God. And we're not going to argue whether it's saltine or unleavened or leaven. Just a piece of cracker. Because we we tell you why. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of bread you're using. Okay. And so we're going to look into some word right now. I want to ask uh, if we can get a uh, reading of the scripture. Let's ask. Uh, let me ask again. I think I asked you last week. And I want to ask you again. Um, Sister Karen Herzog in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania, if she would read this scripture for us, Matthew 26, 17 through 32. Matthew 26, 17 through 32. Would you do that for us, please, Karen? I'm sorry. I, I just got it. Matthew 26. Yes, 17 through 32. Okay. Yes, I, I certainly will. Thank you. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, the master saith, My time is at hand, 
and will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the, and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the, when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to ask, to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and, and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink, eat all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you in Galilee. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. That's Karen Herzog, ladies and gentlemen. She read the scriptures from Matthew twenty six, seventeen through thirty two. We're gonna take a look at that word of God and and um I remember years ago growing up in the Baptist church. Baptists have their way of celebrating communion, and Methodists have their way of celebrating communion. Some call it the Eucharist, and it's known by different names. We call it the Lord's Supper, and everybody has their approach to this. But we want to take a look at Scripture, and then we want to take a look at what Paul says about the communion. So eventually we're going to flip over into 1 Corinthians chapter 11, but not right now. We're going to take a look at the Holy Communion. I remember my first pastorate in Chester, Pennsylvania, Providence Baptist Church in good old Chester, Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, people would come out of the woodwork, Dr. Gene Bratton, in those days on the first Sunday of the month, everybody in town went to church, to their different churches. I mean, you didn't see many of them second, third, and fourth Sunday, or if there were a fifth Sunday. But there's something about communion. I mean, people have in their minds, I mean, people have been deceived by the enemy to think that if they can take communion, everything's going to be all right. So we're going to challenge that mentality today. We're going to rebuke that spirit of religion in the name of Jesus because I remember as a young pastor just fresh out of seminary, on the first Sunday of the month, which we designated as celebrating the Lord's Supper, I mean, I'd see people coming to church who many I had never seen before. And uh, it, you'd get a, a whole different crowd on the first Sunday. And they said they were members of the church. Their names were on the church roll. But you know, back to basics ministries, we teach a whole different thing. We teach what the Bible teaches, that you do not become a member of the church by getting your name on the church roll. You become a member of the church by being birthed into the kingdom of God. You've got to be birthed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Spirit, and that new birth takes place when you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible declares that uh, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, you shall be saved. And so I noticed in my first pastorate and in the several churches I pastored, you know, when it came time to celebrating the Lord's Supper, 
all kinds, buku, uh, 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 kinds of people come out of the woodwork uh, to, uh, to eat the bread and drink the wine, and, and then you'd never see them again. You never would see, you wouldn't see them in Sunday school. You wouldn't see them in prayer service. You wouldn't see them when it was time to do some work for the ministry. But they came out on the first Sunday. So we're going to attack that spirit of religion, ladies and gentlemen, because Satan has deceived a lot of people. There are a lot of people, and some of you listening in today, and some of you listening by the recording, you have been taught and misguided, and people have led you to believe that no matter what you do, as long as you get to church on the first Sunday or whatever that communion Sunday is and you drink that wine and eat that bread, that everything's going to be, right, be right with you. But I want to say au contraire, as, they, as the French say. I know I butcher the French language. They say au contraire. No, to the contrary. Uh, 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 I beg to differ with you. It's more than eating that bread and drinking that wine. So we're going to look at the scriptures, and we'll start with the scripture that Sister Karen just read for us, Matthew twenty six seventeen through uh, twenty two through thirty two. On the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, "Where do you want us to celebrate the Passover?" And the Passover celebration meant that Jesus and his disciples, being Jews, were uh, in Jerusalem, and many people from all over the world, Jews from all over the world, returned to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Well, what was the Passover? The Passover was that night when the death angel passed over every house that had blood on the door. We're talking about the time when God... Uh, created the exodus so that his people could be delivered from slavery. God commanded the people through Moses to kill, slaughter a lamb, and sprinkle the blood on your doorposts because the death angel is going to come through Egypt, and everyone whose house does not have blood on the doorpost, the, the death angel is going to kill the firstborn. And so all over Egypt that night, all over Egypt, and, and the Jews were slaves in Goshen, a part of Egypt. Uh, all over Egypt, the death angel killed people, the firstborn and the firstborn of the animals, even Pharaoh's firstborn son, because the people disobeyed God and enslaved and, and, and God's people and worshipped all kinds of demons and idols. The Egyptian people did. And so God told his people, and the word spread throughout the Jewish community, sprinkle blood on the doorpost. And that was, that was a, 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 a uh, that's the forerunner of the very fact today that your house needs to have the blood of Jesus upon it. I'm not talking about the physical house that you live in. I'm talking about your body, your body body, your body, the house that God has lent you to live in in this life, that you have a spirit in your body, you have a soul in your body, and, and, and God wants to save your soul. God wants your soul to live with him forever and ever and ever, and the only way you can live forever, ladies and gentlemen, get this, please, get this, the only way you can live forever and ever is to be born again. You must be born again. And I'm talking to, there are people out there listening today. Some of you are not born again. You were born into a family, and that family had high ranking in the church, and you've been raised, you, bro, you were brought up to believe that because you go to church, you're going to go to heaven. I remember Florence Gaffney, we grew up together in Past Town Baptist Church in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and they told amen. us, amen, they told, you know they taught us be good. Be good, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and, 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 and you go to heaven. And that's the only thing we knew, Florence. Be good. Come yeah. on, Florence, talk to me. 
Amen. I hear you, Rev. Carter. <laughs> yes, they taught us, be good, and you go to heaven. They did not teach us about being born again. We had good pastors, but, we, but as good as they were, they did not teach about salvation and deliverance. They did not teach holiness. You did not mention holiness and righteousness in that church. And if you did mention holiness and righteousness, they looked at you like you were they looked at you kind of cockeyed. And I understand uh-huh. this still. I understand, Florence Gaffney, they're still looking at folks cockeyed the same way yeah. when you talk about deliverance and holiness and righteousness and the Holy Ghost. But we want to dispel some of those myths and blow that spirit of religion out of the door. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this message today and you're not born again, you need to get born again. You don't have to yeah. go to a church house. You don't have to go to First Baptist, Second Pentecostal, exactly. Third Presbyterian. You can get born again right where you are today. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter to me what family you were married, you were born into or married into. That family may have been a pillar of the church, but ladies and gentlemen, your daddy might have built the church. Your mama may have uh, cooked uh, uh, the meals on Saturday to raise money for the church. Your grandmama might have uh, picked up wood for the fireplace. But ladies and gentlemen, you can't get to heaven based on what your daddy did or what your mama did or what your grandmama did. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I know there are a lot of people today and some of you might hate my guts for this, but I see it all over Facebook. I see uh, people saying, happy, happy heavenly birthday, Mama. Happily, happy mm-hmm. heavenly birthday, uh, Brother John. Happy heavenly birthday, Sister uh, uh, Jean. Happy heavenly birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm scared of that. That's, Dr. Mm-hmm. Bratton, that scares me. That scares me yeah. because a lot of these people were saying happy heavenly birthday or, or happy heavenly Mother's Day. Uh, uh, Dr. Bratton, I, I, I may as well say, hey, Ryan Trugger, I'm going to say it. A lot of them ain't in heaven. A lot of those folks ain't in heaven. So I'm scared to say happy heavenly birthday or happy heavenly Mother's Day. I just say, uh, praise God, thank you for being my mother. Thank you. And Because and, I don't have a heaven to put you in. But, but ladies and gentlemen, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. A lot of these folks who we knew growing up, a lot of these folks who were even members of our household, many of them did not know Jesus. They were not born again. And yes, 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 a lot of them went to church. Florence Gaffney can tell you a lot of them went to church, but they did not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We preach what Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, how can I be born again? And the scripture answers that question. The scripture will answer every question you have. If you take time out to seek God for the answer, the answer, how can I be born again? Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And ladies and gentlemen, once you make that confession, You're saying, hey, I'm saying no to this world. I'm saying no to the pleasures of this world. I'm saying no to the attractions of this world. I'm saying no to sin. I'm saying no to lust. I'm saying no to adultery. I'm saying no to idolatry. I'm saying no to liquor and alcohol. I'm saying no to drugs. I'm saying no to sex with somebody else's uh, partner. I'm saying no. And ladies and gentlemen, when you confess Jesus, the Bible says, uh, as a man thinketh, so is he. And out of the mouth flow the issues of life. Ladies and gentlemen, in the power of your tongue, you have the power of life and death. You have the power of eternal life if you confess Jesus as Lord. That if you will confess him, and when you confess him, you're saying, I deny and denounce Satan. I denounce the world. I denounce sin. I will not return to it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, so many people have been deceived. I would see them. I met a lot of them on first Sunday. They came out of the woodwork. The church was packed. Everybody came to uh, take communion. And they had been deceived from childhood. And, and they were brought up the same way Florence Gaffney and I were brought up. And many of you were brought up. 
in a church that taught be good and you go to heaven. Be good and you go to heaven. Take communion. No matter what happens, you take communion. Once you take communion, you get that bad boy off your back. You know what? A lot of people want to take the Lord's Supper, Supper, communion, because they believe that that bad boy, that demon, that monkey is going to come off their back. I mean, there are people who think communion is like Alka-Seltzer. If I could just get to church on the first Sunday, I, and people who live like hell, uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth weeks of the month, but if I can just get the church on that first Sunday, well, this is the second Sunday of the month right now, if I can just get the church on our communion Sunday, I can get that bad boy off my back. I can get relief from sin. And so a lot of people think the Lord's Supper, taking the Lord's Supper is like taking Alka-Seltzer, you know, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, Uh what a relief it is. Let me say that again. Plop, plop, Uh fizz, fizz. Oh, Mm -hmm. what a relief it is. And then they go back living like hell, gambling, lusting, uh, sleeping with someone else's wife. Uh, 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 now we got them sleeping with animals, sleeping with animals. I heard a story last week about a, a, a woman in South Africa. She gave birth to an ape child, an ape father a child through a woman. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a time of great abomination. And a lot of these people go to church. They go to church. Some of them were sitting next to you in church recently until the churches shut down. But God is doing a new thing, ladies and gentlemen. He's weeding out. He's weeding out. He's getting ready for his harvest. He's getting ready to harvest. He's going to separate the tares from the wheat. And so you need to get ready. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to get ready. I really don't care what you think about me, but listen to the word because I preach the gospel and I try to live the gospel. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you friend me or like me or dislike me. Listen to the word of God. God's word is the only thing that can save you, ladies and gentlemen. And if you know that 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 you're not born again, you need to just stop what you're doing say right now and say, I need to be saved. I need to be saved. Mm-hmm. Or you can type it in the chat window. I need to be saved. Or I want to be saved. And we are ministered to you. And if it's, it will be embarrassing uh, to mention your name over the air, then I will call you in a private phone call. Just uh, type your number in the window. Well, I'll call you and minister uh, salvation to you according to the scripture. Because we do not want anyone to be lost. First Peter 3, 9, the Lord himself says, He is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is waiting for people to come to repent. God is waiting for those first Sunday folks to repent and get right with God. God's waiting for them to throw off the shackles of ignorance. and and demonic possession, and demonic persuasion, and realize that it's not by eating this bread or drinking this wine will you get into heaven. No, you can eat a whole loaf of bread and drink a whole fifth of wine and, and still go to hell, ladies and gentlemen. You can take communion every day. You can go from service to service, and I know some of you hop from service to service. Who's serving? Having communion today. I've got, I've got, I know somebody, a lady, she, uh, before the church is closed down, she would get her calendar together, and the first of the month, she'd just mark on her calendar, well, uh, Second Baptist is giving away free dinners on Sunday, and, and, and Pastown is having dinners on Monday, on, on third Sunday, and now let me yeah. find two more churches. I need to find out who's serving free meals on third Sunday and fourth Sunday. And and Florence Gaffney, if I called her name, you would know her, but I ain't calling no names. Nope, ain't going uh-huh. there. But there are people. Uh-huh. I mean, they they lay out their meal plan based on what churches are offering free meals during the week. I knew an undertaker. I knew an undertaker. He was a single man. He was an undertaker. And, and, and they called him Undertaker. Uh, 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 and I'm, I'm not going to mention his name, but he's, in, he, he's dead now. He is in Philly. Undertaker. Hmm. And Gene Braddon, he would make sure that he knew what funeral was being held uh, on what particular Saturday or what particular day of the week. And he had on his calendar funerals and he was a minister an ordained minister and he would go from church to church sit up in the pulpit 
and grieve with the other folks. And then his purpose was to get a free meal. He got a free uh -huh. meal everywhere he went. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to stop playing with God and get right with God because the day is coming. The day is coming. The day is coming. Now, God's got a lot of people's attention with this coronavirus, but the coronavirus is just a piece of cake, ladies and gentlemen, compared to what's coming down the line. And no running the church on the first Sunday and taking communion is going to save you from what's coming down the pike. So get born again, renounce Satan, renounce the things of the world, and be converted. The Bible says be converted. Turn from your wicked ways, God says in his word, if my people which are called by my name. Now, this is a word for the church. This is a word for the church, the born again, the blood washed, to get right. God is sending a signal to the church, the members of the body of Christ. Get right, church, and let's go home. But if you don't get right, you're going to perish. I heard a well-known preacher on uh, uh, TBN today, he's a well-known, well, well-known well preacher. And he was preaching today, and he told people, you can't lose your salvation. Man, I don't preach that, ladies and gentlemen, because my Bible does not show me that you can't lose your salvation. So what's happening, you've got people listening to pastors like this guy I was just describing, and he's telling them, as long as you, as long as you uh, are born again, if you're born again, then you go ahead and live your life, and, and God, at the end of your life, God will take you into heaven. No, 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 all contraire. You cannot confess Jesus and go back to living like hell. I don't care what pastor so-and-so says. I don't care what bishop so-and-so says. My Bible teaches me any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. Anybody turning back, God says, my, my soul will not have any pleasure in them. And so let us make up our minds and make it up. Make it up. Ladies and gentlemen, this social distancing and this quarantining is letting us know that you might have a lot of people in your life, but when you're quarantined, God got you where he wants you. He got you where he wants you. He, he's got you where you can either make a decision for him or make a decision again him. I pray that you'll make a decision because your friends can't get you into heaven. Your relationships, your popularity, people who like you, they can't. I mean, people have deceived so many other people. They puff you up, pump you up, make you think you're uh, greater than what you are. But when the deal comes down, when you're isolated, when you're all by yourself, and you're left alone like Jacob at the uh, River Jabbok, and you've got to wrestle with God for your soul. Many of you are going to have to wrestle for your soul. So I say get saved today and stay saved. Get saved and stay saved. Well, Pastor, you're supposed to be teaching us about the Lord's Supper. Yes, I am. I thank you for reminding me of getting back to the teaching. Jesus gives us the way to the kingdom. And then in celebrating the Passover, when God delivered the Jews from slavery in Egypt, the Lord told Moses to command the people that this will be forever and ever. Remember to celebrate the Passover forever and ever. And then here comes Jesus, known as the Paschal Lamb, the Passover Lamb. The Bible describes him as the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. John the Baptist was baptizing in the Jordan, and along came Jesus to be baptized. And Jesus said, John, baptize me. John said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away, the Passover Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the whole world. And, and uh, John said, Well, Jesus, you need to baptize me. Jesus has suffered that to be, but baptize me, Jesus. And Jesus identified with sinful man. He was born without sin, did not sin, but yet he identified with our sins, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. And so, um, ladies and gentlemen, baptism does not save you. You must be born again. And when you're born again, then you get baptized. And baptism is a symbol. It's an ordinance. It's a symbol that you have denied Satan. 
You've renounced Satan. That old lifestyle, that lying and that deceiving, that conniving and, and that anger and that bitterness and that hatred and that racism no longer is a part of you. You're living a new life in Christ. That's what uh, being born again and being baptized is all about. And so Jesus gave us two ordinances. One, baptism. You must be baptized. Believe and be baptized. And then he said when he took bread and broke it, he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take it. Eat all of it. Then he told his disciples, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Drink all of it, he said. And in so doing, you do show forth my death and my coming again. He said, do this in remembrance of me. So, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus took the bread and broke it and passed the bread among his disciples, he said, this is my body. Now look, the Roman Catholics say the bread becomes the body of Christ. No, 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 no. no. False teaching. False teaching, ladies and gentlemen. Minister the, bread does, the bread does not uh, change, and, and we're not, not going to teach transubstantiation and all that. No, the bread is the bread. It's a symbol of the body of Christ. Jesus passes the bread around. He says, this is symbolic of my body. Except you eat my body, you cannot have any life in you. Read all of John chapter 6. And then when you get to chapter 6, verse 66, chapter 6 of John, verse 66, uh, many of them left him. They left following Jesus because they said, he said, unless we eat his body, we have no life in him. So, ladies and gentlemen, read the whole scripture. Get under some good Holy Ghost teaching and believe the word of God. And let's get away from these wives' tales, tales and mama's old tales and all that stuff that uh, has no significance. And let's know the truth. Jesus said you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All those people who came out of the woodwork on that first Sunday, they took the bread, drank it, it ate the bread, drank the wine, and went back living their normal lives. And some of you are on from Chester, Pennsylvania. You know some of the people I'm talking about. No change in their life. But they come back again first Sunday. Same old, same mm -hmm. old. And, and now mm -hmm. we have this all over America. And we've got preachers like the preacher I saw today. He said, live your life. Be born again. Accept Jesus. Well, when you're born again, you are in the kingdom of God. But I ain't going to be stupid enough, ladies and gentlemen. I will not embarrass God and humiliate, humiliate God that much and, and blaspheme God and, and get in front of you and say, you can live any way you want to just as long as you're born again. And it's dangerous, the number of pastors who are teaching this, and are afraid to call the people to the task of the Word of God. Many, many pastors are afraid to teach the Word of God. Why? Because they've got sin in their lives. They've got sin in their lives. Many of them do not believe the gospel. I believe the gospel. I fear God. I fear uh, 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 any false teaching. I tremble uh, uh, at God, at standing before God. Uh, in, 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 in self-distancing myself from the whole world and standing for the almighty God and giving an account of this ministry, giving an account of my life. And each of us has to give an account. And so as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's Supper and to uh, eat the bread and drink the wine, we've got to prepare ourselves to give an account before God where we cannot stand with family members. Uh, friends and relatives cannot stand with you. Your fraternity brothers can't stand with you. Your sorority sisters cannot stand with you. Your, your, your baseball team, your basketball team, your golf partner, your bridge partners, they can't stand with you. Every one of us has to stand before God and give an account. And God's going to ask, what about Jesus? Did you receive Jesus Christ? And so the communion is the second ordinance. The first is be baptized, which is a demonstration to the world that you have 
repented of your sins, you have turned from sin, and you denounce Satan, and you receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. That's the celebration of the new birth. The second ordinance of the church is the Lord's Supper. On a regular basis, we should come together and celebrate together, drinking, eating the bread, which represents the body of Christ. No, it's not like the Catholics teach. Uh, it's not, it's not the, the bread is not the actual physical body of Jesus. Come on now. The bread is a symbol of the body. Jesus said in the, in the scripture, I am the bread of life. And the wine is a symbol of his blood. We're not drinking the blood of Jesus. John 6, 66, uh, we're leaving him. Huh? Oh, I'm leaving him because he said except we eat his body and drink his blood. No, 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 no. He was using his body as a symbol. He said, unless you accept my death, I'm going to give my body for you. Ex unless you accept my death as the only way for your salvation, and ex accept, unless you accept my blood as the only thing that can cleanse you from your sins, you have no part in me. And so when Jesus said, take, eat, drink all of it, take, eat, drink all of it, in so doing, you do show my death. And you do show, you declare, you celebrate, you testify that I'm coming back again, and you're testifying that you belong to me. Well, I've given you that teaching, and now I want you to just to get a glimpse, ladies and gentlemen, of where we are today, where we are today, and how it didn't take us long to get where we are today in the church. The church has probably a hundred different approaches to the Lord's Supper and a hundred different kinds of teachings and many of them contradict one another but the real teaching is in the Word of God ladies and gentlemen the Logos that is why we emphasize studying the Bible the Word of God study the Word of God not what Bishop so-and-so wrote in his book not what mother so-and-so wrote in her book, not w what professor so-and-so thinks, not what this great theologian wrote, not what he or she wrote, but what does the Bible say? And, and Peter says in, 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 in first, second Peter, all scripture is given unto one interpretation. There's only one interpretation. I don't care what Pastor so-and-so thinks about the Scripture. I don't care about what Bishop so-and-so thinks. I want to know, what does the Holy Ghost think about this Scripture? And so as I read it, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to teach me what God wants me to have. Turn, will you, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 18 through 34. I hope Wesley Carter has his Bible available. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 18 through 34. I sure would like to ask my son if he would read that scripture for us. And this is just to let you know how quickly, in just a few years after the death of Jesus and his resurrection, in a few years... It only took a few years for Satan to goof up the church and for the church to get into ungodly practices. And we see those ungodly practices at the Lord's table. Hey, Wes, can you read that for us, please? First Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 18 through 34. And that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer food gladly, seeing ye shall yourself arise. Okay, I'm asking, uh, uh, first of all, who's reading this? Florence. Florence, okay, Florence. Okay, <laughs> I had asked... I had asked Wes Carter to come on. Hadn't heard from me. Wes, are you there? Okay, Florence, start, start with chapter 
11, yes. verse 18. Okay, yes, 18 to 34. Thank you. Okay. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. How far was I to read? Okay, jump down to 20, jump down to 23. Okay. Start with 23. Okay. Please. Okay. Are they ministers of Christ? Are you I in think are, Florence? Are you in First Corinthians chapter eleven? No, well, but I don't know. I went to Second Corinthians. Okay, so I got okay, that. Let's, okay, we'll wait for you. No problem. No problem. No First problem. Corinthians First Corinthians chapter eleven. Chapter 11. Yeah. Okay. And First. let's. Okay, since you have chapter eleven. Mm-hmm. I want to start with the, the how they were abusing the Lord's Supper. So start with chapter, verse 20, and go through 34. Whoa, verse okay. 20. 1 Corinthians 20. Okay. Yes. When you come together, okay. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What, have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. So far, so good? Are we together? So far, so good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Uh, Read more. We good? We good. We good for four more verses. Oh, okay. Okay. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Let's oh, see the name. thank you, Florence. Thank you, Sister Florence Gaffney, for reading that scripture. Thank you oh, so thank much, you. and you read it so Amen. well. We praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I had her read the scripture for a purpose. Paul wrote this all approximately 20 years after the resurrection of Jesus. Paul's writing to the Corinthians, and um, uh, he he is um, 
heading towards his death sentence in the in a prison in Rome, but he hears about the problem in the church in Corinth. It was only 20 years after Jesus broke bread with his disciples and instituted the Lord's Supper or the Holy Communion that we find the communion is corrupted, the service is corrupted, the purpose is corrupted, that the reason why people gathered together to celebrate the Lord's Supper was corrupted. Now that was only 20 years after the resurrection of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Now... When we look almost uh, uh, 19, over 1,900 years after that, we see even more corruption. I mean, I mean now uh, some, some churches serve pure wine, and the people come and they drink all they want. They, they glutton themselves, and they get drunk. Uh, and, 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 and some, uh, I, was, I was in a church in Chicago many years ago, and I left that church when I saw this. Uh, uh, my brother was attending this church. And he said, come on, go to my church. I want you to meet my pastor. Well, the man, uh, they never did get around to communion. If they had it that night, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Rachel and I, we, we didn't stay. This was about 30, 40 years ago. And, mm -hmm. and the man was christening a baby, and he said, I christened the baby with the sweat of my brow. Mm -mm. It was a satanic church, ladies, and my brother was all hooked up in that church and all goofed up in there, and, and he was just mm -mm. idolizing that pastor. I said, no, no, this is not a man of God. And so, mm -mm. ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about how people have corrupted over the years the fights, the religious fights and disputes and the killings and the wars that have gone mm -hmm. on over this thing, the, the communion, uh, even to the fact where King Richard the Lionhearted and many of the kings of England and the kings of France would, would raise up armies to go into the Holy Land and fight against the Muslims and, 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 and try to recapture the Holy Grail. What's the Holy Grail? They're trying to discover the cup that Jesus drank from. Ladies and gentlemen, if they had discovered the cup, they would be worshiping the cup not Jesus. It is not the cup that he drank from. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us to flee idolatry. Flee idolatry. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at back at from the time Jesus met with his disciples in that upper room and he took a piece of bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, eat. This represents my body. And then he took a cup of wine and sipped from it and passed the cup around. And in those days, they drank communally. You could drink out of the same cup with somebody. There was no coronavirus. And they drank. And he said, this represents my blood, which will be spilled for you. And unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. In other words, unless you accept my death on the cross and ex unless you accept the shedding of my blood for the remission of your sins, you cannot have eternal life. But now look at what they've done. Now they've made such a mockery, such a shame, or such a, 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 a commonality out of the Lord's Supper and so now most of the church, I'm talking about most of the church in your nation and my nation, they, they believe that, and, and they, they, they are, people are serious about getting out to church on Communion Sunday or to celebrate the Lord's Supper. People will run over their neighbor getting out of their driveway to get to Communion. They will break speed laws. They will run through traffic lights. They will bypass the hungry and the homeless and the needy to get to their seat in the church where people can see them eat a piece of bread, a wafer, and sip a, a, a glass of juice, and, 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 and then... People have the audacity, ladies and gentlemen, to say, I'm saved and, and I'm good for 30 more days. Ah, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. And then they go back to their lying, their adultery, their thieving, their conniving, their bitterness, their resentment, and the racism. Ladies and gentlemen, racism stinks. It's amazing the, the depths how deep racism has cut into this nation and that uh, people put skin color before the blood of Jesus. They put uh, skin color. Uh, you take the most common 
a person of a certain race, and they will elevate that person above the best in another race. Ladies and gentlemen, this racism thing stinks. Politics is built on racism. Economics is built on racism. And, and, and making sure that we stay in control. Ladies and gentlemen, you watch what will happen in this forthcoming election, how people uh, will look at a, a thug, a punk, a, 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 a doofus, a liar, a conni conniver, a, a hater, mm -hmm. and, and, and they will do everything they can to keep him in office. And the sad thing is, Many of the people who are fighting and, and, and fighting against other other ethnic, ethnic groups and other races don't realize that the same person they're trying to keep in office will diss them and kick them to the curb with the quickness. He'll get rid of you with the quickness. He doesn't a bit more care about you than he cares about the man in the moon. Ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, my prayer, and I prayed it this morning, and I pray again, God, raise up godly leaders in this nation. Raise up Amen. godly leaders who will walk yes, in the Lord. beauty of holiness and righteousness, Lord, and will guide this nation into holiness. Otherwise, we will all perish. And ladies and gentlemen, mm. another prayer. Lord, help the church to wake up. Let us not hate. Let us not give in to hate. Let us not cross over to the dark side. No matter how difficult things become, no matter how much persecution we have to face, let us walk in love because the scripture says, let love abide in us. The scripture teaches us to love one another. And so we got a whole lot of folks rushing mm. the church all over America, all over the world, rushing to church on a certain Sunday to eat a piece of bread and a drink of some beverage, and they call themselves Christians, but yet they go back, and for the next four weeks, they do anything and everything Satan suggests they do. They mistreat one another. They lie. They deceive and, and connive uh, and 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 and. and and, and hate their neighbor and will do anything they can. But when communion Sunday comes around, mm -hmm. you see them running the church. They put on their holiness. Mm -hmm. They put on their garment of praise. Communion mm -hmm. Sunday comes around. And I particularly put on my clerical shirt and my clerical collar today and snap my tab in here so I can look mm -hmm. like a pastor. I can look like a pastor. A lot of mm -hmm. folks want to look holy, look righteous. But righteousness is not in your appearance. Righteousness is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he declares all who believe in him to be righteous. And if you're righteous, you're not going to hate your neighbor. You're not going to be a racist. You're not going to dishonor your, your neighbor's wife. You're not going to dishonor your neighbor when he's at work and you're sleeping with his wife. You're not going to dishonor the temple that the Holy Spirit lives in by drinking and smoking pack cigars and, and drugs. And, and, and you're not going to dishonor the great mind that God has given you by entertaining demonic thoughts and reading uh, pornography and, 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 and downloading pornography. No, you're going to live in holiness. And that's what partaking of the Lord's Supper is all about. We pledge to follow Jesus, and we pledge to love one another. And so we're going to just take a little, uh, do something a little bit different right now for the next few minutes. Let's take about five minutes. Give those of you who are listening to the recording, don't turn the recording off. Just go into your kitchen or into your pantry. Get you a little glass of juice. If you don't have grape juice, get something that uh, is a reasonable facsimile thereof. Get you some grape juice and a piece of cracker. And then we want you to come back. And then uh, we're going to eat the bread and drink the wine together in the name of Jesus. And then in the meantime, we will entertain any questions that you may have. Any questions that you may have. And so, if there are questions, I spilled this early, Jackie. But we can, we can, we can still work. No, we we can. Is Jared still here? We can still work with this.
Okay, then um, we can still work with. Ladies and gentlemen, who has the first question? If there are questions that you have, we entertain questions while people are getting their juice together. I'm going to refill my glass with some Welch's grape juice. We'll wait for you. It's Pastor Leroy no. Carter. We're getting ready to celebrate the Lord's Supper, ladies and gentlemen. And we're waiting on people to go into their kitchens, get their um, grape juice and their bread. And then we're going to eat the bread together and drink the juice together, representing, symbolizing the blood and body of Jesus Christ. So we're going to wait a few more minutes. Dr. Jean Bratton, will you come on and speak to us for a moment? Or if Dr. Jean's not available, she's probably in her kitchen. Uh, let's have Karen. Karen, are you there? Thank you, Jackie Carter. Jackie, is there anything that you notice in the chat window we need to attend to? Let me know. Okay. I'm back. I'm back, Dr. Carter. I was I was muted. I didn't. I was trying to figure out why I wasn't coming through. <laughs> okay. Hi, Karen. I uh, hope this teaching Hi. was a blessing to you today. Yes, it was always always. Do you have any questions that uh, maybe things you have heard or questions you have heard or entertain? pertaining to the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion, or any comments you'd like to make? Well, I think you I think you hit it really, really well when you talked about the RC church. Actually, they, they actually kill Jesus every time they do Mass, or they call it the Eucharist. And, and, and they most kill of our again, churches, you say? Yeah, actually, that's, that's what they're doing, um, because they're saying this is his body, and, and like you said, no, it's a symbol, and that's what he taught us. Um, and they just do it a whole different way. Um, but I wasn't raised Catholic, but I've been in. I've, I've actually know friends that have have been. Um, but it's it's a totally different different way of taking communion. Praise God! Praise God! And have you found that a lot of people now that? Because you believe in Jesus, a lot of people who have been taught erroneously, do they resist yeah, you? I, they, res they resist the truth? Yeah, everybody, you know, anyone that, I, I've had resistance with the, the hyper grace movement, actually, thinking that, you know, we're in the age of grace, all, everything's good, you know. You don't have to follow anything once you're saved, always saved. It, it, people are still are still definitely getting taught that, and it's like every, everything's a free pass. We don't live under the law. It's like, wait a minute, you know, there are law there are laws in the New Testament as well as the Old Testament. He doesn't want you to live like a heathen. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you mean? call it the hyper grace movement, huh? Yeah, that's what I call it <laughs> because we think everything else goes once they. Uh, once they're saved and they're under grace. But the and, grace and Karen, was with Karen, the Karen, there are pastors teaching this stuff, aren't there? Yes, there are. But, you know, grace was bought with a price, and that was the price of our Savior's life. Yes, he spilled his blood to give us grace. And, 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 and then the scripture even reverent. tells us, Karen, that the, the law, we, we still have to keep the law. God doesn't want us running around lawless, lawlessly, and the, the exactly. scripture says the law is our schoolmaster. Amen. Exactly. And that's where the people get it all wrong. The law is our schoolmaster to keep us in line. And we need, Karen, I don't know about you, but I need to be kept in line. You know that? Well, none of us are perfect, and we none of us none of us are without sin. So we need we need a savior. Amen. I mean, that's, just the bottom, Amen. that's the bottom line, and we need the Holy Spirit to guide us all the all the way because, 
even even one little thought could be unholy to a holy God, and Amen. we might not even be aware of it. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Anyone else want to share any questions before we go into actually eating the bread and drinking the wine? Hey, Pastor. Hello. Hey. Yeah, back when we were growing up, um, I grew up Baptist, and they used to tell us before we even took communion, you know, the preacher would preach first, and he always told us, if you're not right with God, you do not take communion. That you are to, that you are to be saved and have your hearts right with him. And he would preach, and he would allow the Holy Spirit to move and to convict the hearts of those who were unsaved. And then we would pray and have those come up for an altar call. Then we would have communion afterwards. Yes. And I've yes. seen a lot of people get saved, but then there was a lot of them that wouldn't take communion because they wasn't re ready. And the Lord convicted them against having communion because they knew they wasn't ready. And then there hey, was some, a lot of them just did it because they, well, they just did it even though they knew they wasn't saved, but people still prayed for them. But, yeah, that that's how I was taught growing up. Thanks, Dustina. I came up uh, kind of like that way, too, although even though our church never mentioned salvation, they didn't talk about salvation, you know. Uh, you, they would say, you won't go to heaven unless you unless this and that. But, you know, right. but praise God, as, as I became a pastor, we began, and, and I was in, in deliverance ministry, God would Give, give us the word first through me or, or whoever was preaching. Then we'd have an altar call and okay. give people an opportunity, Dustina, to repent of their sins. But you hit it right on the head because there were a lot of people, Dustina, who would come to church on communion Sunday, and just before the communion service itself, they would get up and leave. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. I remember, Florence yeah. Gaffney, you remember that too. They would get up and leave. And, and you yeah. ask, why do you leave? I, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, or I'm not worthy. Hey, look, if you can't respond to the altar call and repent, confess, that was the time for confession. And, and mm -hmm. Paul says, Paul makes this so plain in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, he, he talks about, uh, let a man examine himself, and so mm -hmm. let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh mm -hmm. damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Then he says, For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So the Lord gives us a chance before we mm -hmm. eat this bread and drink this wine, mm -hmm. judge right. ourselves. Well, how do you judge mm -hmm. yourselves? Lord, search me. The psalmist said, Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So that, that altar call Dustina talked about was a time for people to search themselves. And, yes, I witnessed a lot of people get saved on Communion Sunday because mm -hmm. they had not been properly taught. But God's grace I mean, the Spirit would move upon them, and they would repent of their sins, and many would get saved and receive Jesus. And then when they came back the next time, they knew why they were there. Thanks for sharing that, Amen. Dustina. Amen. Anyone and else? Take... They shouldn't leave. Yes? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, those who get up and leave during, right before the communion, I've mm -hmm. seen people who not take communion and then afterwards, you know, the Holy Spirit's still moving. People are still going up to the altar even after that. They 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 should still wait and wait for the Holy Spirit to move because yes. people were still getting saved even after the communion. So that yes. I, I never understood that either, why they would leave when the Holy Spirit was still there moving and souls were being saved. But, you know, yes. the, the Lord knows and the Lord took care of it. So yes. we just have it to It used to grieve my yeah. heart. Yes, Dustin. Yeah. It used to make my heart my heart heavy to see people get up and leave and miss mm -hmm. that grace period. Mm -hmm. That's the grace moment. That's the grace yeah. moment, uh, um, Karen. That's the moment of grace when when you know that you know that you're not right, 
But mm-hmm. God gives you that opportunity to mm-hmm. confess your unrighteousness and get saved. And so okay. um, the number of people who have been misguided saying, I'm not worthy of communion. Hey, why did Jesus die on the cross? Save us from our sin. Salvation. We were worthy of him dying, wasn't it? He loved us so much, he hung and bled and died for us. And mm-hmm. and, and we're going to say, well, I, I ain't ready. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy for, for what you did for me. So come on, people. If there are any of you out there right now, you've got sin in your life or you got things you're ashamed of, don't don't run now. Don't 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 click off. Don't sign out from this 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 moment. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. No matter what. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what you have done, no matter how difficult it was what you've done, get free today. Those things that plague you, bother you, trouble you, grieve you. On the inside, those things you don't want anybody to find out, those things you hope God never brings up, confess it not to people. It is none of our business what you've done. Mm-hmm. Confess to the Lord right now. We're going to take this moment right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for all of us. We thank you, Father, that you so love the world that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Lord, forgive us of our sins. God, I confess all of my sins. I confess my hidden and secret sins, those things that only you and I know about. Lord, deliver me from them. And Lord, deliver the people from any hidden and secret sins. Cleanse us, God. Lord Jesus, you found us so worthy of these blessings that you hung on the cross and died and shed your blood for us and gave up your body, life for us. And so we receive you in the name of Jesus. And as we eat this bread and drink this wine together, we do show forth your death and your coming back again. And we celebrate you, Lord Jesus. We celebrate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, having done this, and we can chat and chew a little bit more, uh, uh, but let's take right now um, your piece of bread or your cracker, hold it up in your hand. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. And Father, I thank you for this bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for all of us, for me. You're my personal Savior. You're our personal Savior. And in the name of Jesus, we eat the bread together. Let us eat the bread together. And Father, we take the cup which contains the fruit of the vine, which represents the symbol of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You said without the spilling of blood, there is no remission of sins. Thank you, Lord Mm -hmm. Jesus, for shedding your blood for us. And we eat this bread and drink this wine in remembrance of you. We do show forth your death. And you're coming again. Amen. Drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And just take a moment of silence and receive the grace of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I command that you be healed in your body, your mind, your soul, and your spirit. Yeah, white guy. Father, heal us. Heal us, we pray. Heal us today. In Jesus' name, thank you for healing. 
Thank you for healing. Thank you, Father, that no plague shall come near our dwelling. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, that we do not have to be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side, and ten thousand at our right hand, but it not, shall not come near us. And we praise you, Father, and we bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of salvation and eternal life. Thank you that you have accepted us into the beloved. Help us to love one another and to walk together in love. Let us not hate. Let us not be bitter. Let us not resent one another or anyone. Help us to walk in the love of Jesus Christ. And we praise you, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to uh, end the the recording, stop the recording, and I thank those of you in the international community and those of you who could not be online live with us. Thank you for tuning in. And if you have any questions, please uh, contact me, and I'll be glad to uh, answer your questions, share with you. So we're going to end the recording. Then I want to.